So in this part, what we're going to be setting up is the parallax background, where when you have your main character walk left and right, the background elements are going to move at different speeds. So you can see that the ground that is close to the player appears to move the least fast, the clouds behind it are a little bit faster, and then the sky far in the background seems to move the fastest. So in order to set this up, we need a component attached to each of the objects that we want to apply the parallax effect to. That's going to mean each of these individual three background pieces. So I'm going to add a new component and we'll call it parallax effect. New script, create an add. I'll make sure that I move the script into the scripts folder before I go to edit it. So now in Visual Studio, I'm going to open up the parallax effect. So first off, I want to point out the original for this script is by Adam C. Jonas on YouTube. So he has a very lengthy video talking in detail about how this parallax effect works exactly. If you're interested in that, I would go check out his video. This will just be mostly to get it working. So first off, we're going to need two references to game objects in our scene. So the first is going to be the camera. So let's get a reference to public camera cam. And then we're going to need the transform of the follow target of the camera. So that would generally be the player in our scene. So I will just put a public transform and I'll say follow target since that's most relevant for our script. As our camera moves, it's going to follow the player across the screen. And based on the movement of the camera, we're also going to be moving each of the objects that the parallax effect is attached to. At the start of our script, we want to remember the position of the parallax game object. So we'll have a vector two starting position. And we'll set this on the start method because the time when it's relevant is when the object first enters and is enabled in the scene. So that's where we'll set that. We're also going to want to get a reference to the starting Z value. So float starting Z. For a 2D game, the Z axis is going to be the distance into the background. So when something is really far from the camera or the player into the background, that's because it's going to have a very negative Z value. So we want to remember what the starting position of that Z value was as well. So when our script starts, we can set those up. So starting position is equal to transform.position. So normally transform.position gives you a vector three, but we can just automatically cast this to a vector two and shave off the Z axis. So for the z-axis, we'll get that as starting z, which is transform.position.z. And then when the frames update in our game, we want to move the position of our parallax object based on how far the camera has moved uh, from the starting position. So we'll do vector2, new position, and this is going to be for the parallax object, is equal to the starting position plus the camera move since start. So we care about how far the camera has moved, and we're going to use that in calculations for determining how far this object should move. And that's going to be modified by something called a parallax factor, which we'll set up in a minute. And so once we have the new position, we want to set that on the transform. So transform.position, once again, this is of the parallax effect object, is equal to a new vector 3, new position.x, new position.y, and then the starting Z value. So essentially here, even if we're changing the X, Y position, we're not moving the position of the Z value. Okay, so the camera move since start, that's gonna be a vector two. And we're gonna put camera move since start. Now this is gonna be a value we wanna calculate on every frame. You could just put vector two, name of the vector down here and set it in the update method. But there's another way of doing things, which is kind of cool, which if you do equals and then a arrow in front of it, then that's going to mean it updates itself on every frame and you don't need to put it directly in the update method. So we're going to take the camera position, the new one, and we'll just cast that as a vector two since we're setting a vector two as well. So cam dot transform dot position here. And we're going to subtract the starting position of this game object. So starting position. And we're figuring out in a XY only basis, how far has the camera moved away from the starting position of this parallax object. So this is basically meaning that at the start of the scene, there's no parallax effect. And as the camera moves away from that starting position, it's going to apply a different amount of movement to each of the parallax effect objects inside of our scene. But each object is going to get a different amount of parallax because they are different distances into the Z axis. So one object might have a negative one Z and the next might be negative two. And then the amount of parallax movement you get is going to differ between them because of that value. OK, so the next thing we need is this parallax factor. So that's going to be a float parallax factor. 
And that's going to be set on every frame as well. So this is going to be equal to the absolute value of the distance between the parallax effect object and then the follow target object. So mathf.absolute value or abs, the absolute value of let's call it the distance from target. And we're going to divide that by a clipping plane value, which we'll set up in a minute as well. So the distance from the target is going to be pretty straightforward as well. So that's going to be float distance from target. We'll do the equals arrow sign again to make it calculate on every frame. And that's going to be the parallax effects position. So transform dot position minus the follow target transform dot position. And uh, both of these are on the Z axis specifically. So we only care about the distance into the background that this parallax effect is going, not the X, Y positions here. So you know what? It probably makes sense to rename this to be Z distance from target. Just make that a little bit clear. So now for this clipping plane value, I'm just going to paste. I'm just going to paste that in quickly. So it's going to select whether we use the far clipping plane value from the camera or the near clip plane value from the camera based on if the distance from the subject is positive or negative. So if the parallax object is in front of the player, it's going to have a negative value. And then therefore, it's going to use the near clip plane. If it's behind the player, it's going to use the far clip plane value. And then we add that to the Z position of the camera. And that's the value we feed in down here for the parallax factor. And of course, since I renamed this to be Z distance, got to change the variable there. So before we finish the script, one mistake I made that we've got to fix is when we do the cam move since start, it's multiplied by the parallax factor, not divided by. If you do divide, it's going to look wrong. So make sure you change this into a multiply if you haven't already. And now we can go back to our game view. So make sure that on all three of the backgrounds that you have added in the parallax effect component. So if you don't have any on them, you can just select all three of them. Do add component and parallax effect to add them all at once. Now we can drag the main camera onto the camera slot. So just drag that there. If you have all three selected for the backgrounds, then it will add it for all three of them at once as well. So same thing for the player becoming the follow target. Click on each of the backgrounds once to check. And now we need to set the Z positions of these different backgrounds. So when something is further into the background, like the sky, it's going to appear to move faster than the foreground, like the hills, which are closer to the camera. And then the hills, which are much closer to our target, are going to appear to move slower. So move the hills just a little bit past the player. We could do something like negative 0.4 as the Z value. It doesn't need to be a huge amount. And then the clouds, further than that, let's try negative 0.7. And then the sky, the furthest, we can try at a value somewhere around negative 0.95 or negative 1. So now if we go into play mode, you'll be able to move around left and right, and you should see the sky in the background moving the fastest. The clouds move a little bit faster than the ground, and then the ground is moving the least. It's still moving, just not as much as the clouds and the far background. And as you go in the reverse direction, you'll and as you'll go in the reverse direction, it appears that the sky in the background is now moving the opposite direction to the right. As we move to the left, the sky moves to the right and vice versa. So that's basically how we can achieve the parallax effect on the background in our 2D platformer game.